to do the zip and grip um, from So Yours uh, in clear TPU vinyl. Um, this isn't my first time using it. This is my first time sewing an entire bag using it. Uh, I am sitting here trying to get the tension of my machine where I want it to be. That's like the first thing um, to really do when you're using clear vinyl is get your tension correct. Um, so we're going to play with that a little bit um, as we get started. But come on in, say hello. Uh, this is what we're up to. Oh, and look, my live just came on over here and now I have, I don't didn't have my mute button on there. All right, so that's what we're up to. Uh, and I'm gonna have to go grab the pattern in a second so I can make sure I have correct measurements. But I have everything already cut out. Um, I did already um, make a zip and grip with vinyl and cotton woven. Um, it doesn't turn out, you do bind it at the very end. Uh, and it turned out really great. It's a pretty fun sew. So I highly suggest going and grabbing the pattern. I do have the link for the pattern as well as um, her YouTube channel and her video um, listed in the details as well. Uh, the vinyl that I am using, this pretty floral, um, is from Wonderground Fabrics. I also have this listed. Um, Gabby's currently sold out of it, so um, keep it on your radar but it's, it's gorgeous. It's such pretty um, spring colors. Um, so that's what we're doing. But I'm gonna try to get my tension. I'm gonna kind of push you guys down here so you can see. I'm trying to get my tension where I want it. So I just have some scrap here folded over and I'm gonna tighten this again here a little bit. And I have my narrow foot on my machine. Let's see how this looks. It didn't start very well and it's still, it's still too loose. Loosey goosey. So we're gonna keep trying this. Mm. I am not the best at, at figuring this out. That's the only issue and I'm just making sure that I have everything correct amundo with um how i'm threaded here on my machine because sometimes when i haven't sewn for a little while i thread my machine wrong let's see that feels like it's pulling oh nope 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 let's see if i do it a tighter where it is there Yeah, this is like the hardest part is making sure your tension with this. If anybody has tricks, post them in the comments. This is just real time me figuring it out. Mm -hmm. This may be this may be the entire video. <laughs> Let's see. We're just gonna we're gonna go tighter than what I think I need. And maybe that will maybe that will do it. That's looking better. Okay, okay. Tighter than what I think I need. That was the right, right decision there. Let's try it again. Yeah, that's looking better. Okay, okay, okay. Maybe one more good turn here and we'll be where we're supposed to be. Yeah, I feel like that's that's probably pretty good. I mean, you can still see, and I think for most people, when you're just doing two layers of this, you're still going to see the little, I don't know if you guys can see it here. So you can see this is where I was really loose 
Um, you can still see a little bit. Let me turn the light there. Um, you can still see a little bit. Yeah, the tension is, oh, way down. Like tight, like way tight. Um, I mean, this is, that looks pretty good there, the way that is. I might, I might do a little bit more, like way down, like it's turned really tight to it. Yeah. Um, I definitely think it needs to be pretty tight. Let's see here. Yeah. It's looking good. It's not, my biggest thing is I don't want it to come through the top, you know? So I think it looks pretty good. I think it looks pretty good now. All right. So always, you know, if you're using an industrial machine, um, definitely with the TPU vinyl, you definitely have to play with your tension. Um, I th think if you're using a domestic machine, I think most people um, use a Teflon foot for this and I, I've never used it on my domestic machine, so that would be something for me to try. But there we have it. The tension is set where we need it to be. And I need to grab the pattern because I need to know a few little measurements for, for where the handles go. And I was going to do those beforehand. Because I got busy with other things. So... Um, the pattern, I, I mean, I feel like the pattern was pretty easy to follow. At least I felt it was. Um, her video is very well done. So, obviously, um, this video <laughs> is not going to be as well done as that. Um, because, well, we're just rolling with it. All right, and one of the things that I am, I am not, um, I did not cut out connectors. I am using webbing. And I think, yeah, I think my other hardware is in here. So I'm using webbing. And it says to use um, the rectangle rings. I didn't have them, so I am using um, D-rings. Wow. It has been a day already. And then uh, I am using two zipper pulls for the outside zipper. I'm not doing any pockets on the clear one. Um, you probably could do like clear slip pockets, um, but I decided to just do the inside zipper um, pocket that's there. So we're going to do the inside zipper pocket, but I'm going to be using webbing for the handle uh, and D-rings, which is the main difference of what I'm doing from the pattern. All right, so the first things first. I'm just going to put my pattern here next to me so I have it. Um, I am going to need this um, piece of webbing I need to cut in half. And obviously webbing phrase, so I need to sear this down. can see hopefully yep okay it's already been a crazy Monday how is everybody else's Mondays going I adulted a lot today I feel like I feel like that's why I'm frazzled there was a little too much too much adulting I made doctor's appointments yeah so um the way that uh she has like if you cut these out i'm pretty sure i'm doing this correctly am i yeah so what i'm going to do i feel like maybe i should have done this differently how can i make that look pretty Again, roll with me here. This is how these lives are going to be. 
because again, springtime. If you're just joining my channel and you're like, who is this woman who's all over the place? Um, springtime is hard for us because uh, we have campsites here on our farm and this, like this time right now is actually like we're doing all of the preparations for that. I'm trying to think, could I like cover the edge with some water resistant canvas that I'm gonna bind it with? <laughs> Anybody else do this while they're sewing? Like just kind of makeshift things? Penny says, busy Monday here, I need a nap. Oh, girl. I need a nap too. I actually, part of my adulting today, if you've been following me for a little while, you know I've been having like issues with my neck and my shoulder. And uh, I made a massage appointment. I've ne I never do that for myself, but I figured I, I'm pretty sure the neck thing is a pinched nerve. So... Sometimes I make up as I go. Yes, see, that's kind of where, like, because I thought the webbing would be easier, but now I'm like, oh, I probably should have left more. Unless I want to fold this like so, like in on itself, I could. That is how the pattern is, like, you fold your vinyl that you cut in on itself. And I could just go back and forth on that. I just don't know. I feel like, is that going to be secure enough? I kind of want to do like a boxed stitch and I don't think it's not quite big enough to do a box stitch. And if I bring these down further, it's not like, it's not enough. So I feel like it just needs something more. So let's see here. We're going this is gonna fray. Goodness gracious. Let's play with this a little bit. So there's fun things happening here. They're just very it's just stressful. There's just a lot going on. Um, and if you have a business or uh have ever dealt with anything business wise you know that that's just part of it but I like I like when things are settled versus things not feeling settled and things feel things are in the stage of not settled <laughs> oh. all right so here's what we're gonna do we're going we're going to see, I think, I might have, do I have any ends? Do I have any ends? That's, that would work out better. Do I have any gunmetal ends? Pop your suggestions if you have an idea for me of how I make this look nice. I don't have any. I have two containers of gunmetal hardware. I think. I might, I might, I might. What are these? Yes. We can do that. That's what we're doing, people. <laughs> we're just adding hardware to it. Okay. I used to have horrible neck and back issues, so sorry. Yeah. It's, you know what? I feel like, um... So at first I thought it was just like stress related or I slept wrong. Um, but I think, I 
think it was my furry buddy. I think it was my Apollo. Um, he's, you know, he's part husky, and so he likes, he likes to yank. And I think, I think that's what happened. Oh yeah, that'll look nice. We're just gonna, we're gonna do some pretty hardware on the end of this. That works. All right, so first things first, we're gonna just sew the very bottoms of these so that they're, they're nice for the hardware. Yeah, so I think that's what happened. I think he yanked this arm with his leash um, and also stress. I have an injury on this arm. Um, I'll put you this way so you aren't just seeing my chest. Um, <laughs> I have an injury on my left arm from when I was younger. I was in a really bad car accident that I had to be cut out of. Um, and my arm was like very bruised on that side. Of course, I was young and was like, I'm fine. I don't need to go to the doctor or the hospital and get anything checked out. Um, it probably should have been checked out. Um, and so I think, you know, as we get older, all those injuries from <laughs> 25 years ago, um, they start showing up in lots of different ways, right? Okay. It's so long sometimes because I see things that can be changed or embellished during construction. Yeah, I well, and see, I thought it would be fun to kind of, I saw some people do this in clear TPU. Um, and I, like I said, I have, I've bought a lot of it not really knowing if I, like, what I was going to use it for. And I, I felt like I just need to use it. I just need to sew with it. I just, just need to use it. So what better way to make me use it than to do, do a live. <laughs> All right. Now here's the tricky part with this, with the handle. Um, again, I don't, I, I don't want to use rivets because I feel like now that I added that hardware, I'm already adding more hardware, but because this is a D-ring, this is tricky. Let's see, can we just sew across there like so and have it look nice? You ever do that? Like, oh, well, I'm sure you have. I, I mean, I feel like this is everybody does this. Buy stuff because you're like, oh, that's great. And then just don't use it. I, I'm trying to lessen the amount of, of stuff I do that with, though. So it's just not economical. Nor do I have time. <laughs> All right. We're just going to do a little back and forth. So I'm hoping that the massage takes care of this because it's so weird. It's gone from my back um, to, like, well, first it started in my neck. Then I went to my, like, back shoulder blade area. Then it went to like my arm and like my, uh, oh, what do you want to call it? Like your decollete area. Um, like right now it's actually doing pretty good. And it did feel really good. It did feel really good until I took my daughter and her friends on spring break. And then I, so like that's where part of it, I feel like stress like inflames it. Uh, they're, they're good kids though. I have to say, um, uh, my daughter has some really good friends and like they're, they're good kids. Like they're not partiers or it's just, oh, to be 20 again and have like, I don't know. Not that they don't have any cares because I feel like they obviously have things they're worried about or care about, but like to re not have 
like adulthood fully have settled in yet. Every time we compensate because of pain, we cause, yeah, a new problem. Yep. I thought maybe like, because, you know, I only got the industrial last summer. I thought maybe because of using the knee, um, you know, lift, like maybe that was it, but I got a good chair. Like, I feel like I'm at the right height. Like I'm not, so I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what, what the massage therapist has to say about it and what she thinks. She figures it was probably just being yanked by the dog. All right, so next thing we're gonna do. So here you have two pieces that look like this. Um, one's for the top, one's for the bottom. When you go and um, when you cut it out for like the regular uh, one, you're obviously gonna have your exterior and your interior. The one piece gets a slip pocket, the other piece gets a zipper pocket. Um, but again, because I'm doing the clear, I'm, I'm not doing that today. So just making sure you know if you're going to do it the regular way. What, please watch her video because her video is, is truly so good. Okay. So I am going to put my bag tag on now. And I want to find my centers. I'm just going to clip some small clips. And I'm just interested how this is going to be raw edge wise. I don't know. We'll see. I did get a lot done as far as back end computer stuff while I was away with my kid. Um, so they did Washington, D.C. They did all the, um, well, not all the Smithsonian's, but they did the Air and Space uh, Museum. And they did, am I doing this correctly? Yeah, no, this one has to go this direction. Um, they did the Air and Space Museum. They did the um, art museum and they did the um, natural history museum. So they got to at least three of the museums and then the first night they did go around in the evening um, to all of the like memorials that they wanted to see. So they got to see everything all lit up at night, which DC at night is so pretty, quite honestly. Um, so that was pretty cool that they got to see that because most of her friends that came with us, they, um, they're from upstate New York. So I was shocked to hear that most of them had never, never gone to DC before. So, getting 20 somethings to wake up in the morning. <laughs> oh, that is a, that is a feat amongst itself. Where, you know, like I would be like, okay, we're getting going for the day. It's, it's nine o'clock. I've been up for a couple hours now. Um, they were still, they were still hibernating. So, um, Diana, I am making a um, zip and grip. Here, I'll show you the picture. I should have brought mine over that I made. Where's the actual picture of the pattern? Zip and grip, okay. That's what I'm making, but I'm doing it with the clear TPU vinyl um, from So Yours. So that's what we're doing. That's what we're doing. And I'm gonna pull through here. 
to knock this off. There we go. And then from DC, we went to Ocean City, Maryland, which Ocean City, Maryland was not fully open yet, but they did get to enjoy the boardwalk. And Apollo got to enjoy the beach the last day. All right. A little wonky, but it's fine. So I have my label on. Now I'm going to put my handle on the other piece that's like that. Set that piece aside on my centers. I have no idea if this will work or not, you guys. <laughs> it's just... just making sure you know. I, I, I have no idea. It just was my way of saying to myself, you're going to cut some of this pretty clear vinyl and you're going to make something with it. That isn't just a pouch because that's primarily what I've done. All right. So let's see here. I need to, oh, that's right. Okay. So the one where is it? The one pattern piece comes with where you um, put the straps. So I am going to mark this. Can I mark it with? Hmm. Because you know your vinyl pen really doesn't work. Unless I'm going to use. Does that work? Nope. Nope. Any ideas on what works here, you guys? Because I tried my uh, Mormino pen on it earlier. And it was not working. Well, we'll, we'll try it again. Yeah, it's like barely. Not even. Well, I guess it's enough for me to, to see it. There we go. And then you just flip it around, find the center. Okay. Place clear on top of pattern and use double-sided tape. Oh, oh, smart penny. Penny smart. This worked good enough for now, but that's a good idea, Penny. Smart, smart, smart. Um, I'm going to use double-sided tape here, though. That piece is probably too big. Maybe. I still have to be able to get my, oh, my little, my piece of hardware under there. Bye, honey. Bye. My husband's going to work. Any other second shifter wives out there? It's a thing. <laughs> I tell you. He likes second shift though. He always has. I tell him I tell him because he doesn't like authority. <laughs> but <laughs> he likes it because he can get other stuff done here at home in the morning. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do like a box X, an X around there. But I want to first, let's see how far in we need to go with this. Come on, get on there. Okay. 
probably should have marked that, Jenna. It's so pretty here today. I'm so glad that the weather is changing. Never enjoyed second shift. I always felt like it broke the day up in a way that didn't allow time on either side. I'm not smart about time management though. I don't see my, my husband really isn't either. I don't know. He just, he's one, not a morning person at all. Um, which is where my daughter gets it, I'm pretty sure. And, um, but he's still, like, it's funny because now, you know, with the kids, like, I mean, he's always had to get up with the kids. Like, when I worked full time, he was the one who was here with the kids. It definitely worked really well having little kids and working, like, me working an opposite shift. Um, it wasn't great on our marriage. But it was good as far as, like, you know, getting the kids to preschool and all of that. Like, ha not having to have childcare um, for the entire day. But, yeah, he's just always always been second shift and I think if they asked him to be first shift he'd be like mm, nope sorry <laughs> like that's how much he likes it so not for everybody I'm sure just it made more sense like once our kids got older it made more sense for me to work from home because we never saw each other we saw each other on the weekends and and that was that okay let's see can I pull this through make sure did I go over it too oh I did that's good yay So that's one of the reasons I left my corporate job was just because we we did not see one another. We were passers, passers in the morning. And my job was the one that could be more flexible. Like what I did was more flexible with marketing and sales and stuff. I could do that pretty much anywhere for anyone. where he is an electro mechanical mechanic. So he kind of has to be at a specific time. Oh, that looks, I'm always like so worried that my boxy, my boxies are gonna not look very nice, but that boxy looks pretty nice. I'm pretty happy with that. All right, let's do the other side. I have no idea how long this is going to take because the one that I did that was like the full thing definitely took me some time. Has anybody else done this pattern already? I This was one that I like I saw when it came out and I was like, I really want to make that. It was one of those like impulse pattern buys. <laughs> I know that this this vinyl is so pretty. 
I, I can understand why Gabby sells out of it at Wonderground. Um, I think I bought it like the first time she listed it. And then, because it was one of the first clear vinyls that I bought. Because um, I just, I'm a sucker for florals. And like the color, the colorway is definitely my colors. The teals and the purples and the blues and the pinks. And the fairy floss goes really well with it. Yes, they came out the same time looking. Yes, George, uh, Georgie. Yes. So I bought this one. And then I saw Amber from Craft Reporter. I was, and I messaged her. I was like, she she posted one around the same time. And I was like, oh, I just bought that pattern. And then I read the name of it. And I was like, wait a second. That isn't the pattern that I bought. And it was another one. And I think the one that um, Amber did, that one is like, you turn it, you can turn it. Oh, that didn't turn out very nice. Got kind of naughty on the back not good I've made 17 of them oh my gosh <laughs> that's awesome that's amazing actually oh goodness that's that's a hot mess in the back there goodness gracious let's see I'm gonna bring that through as long as we can get it to pull through again I never said I was professional. <laughs> I just said I was doing this so that someday my kids could learn how to sew if they wanted to. They decided that they would like to learn from me. So the added bonus is that you are all here. Oh goodness, I don't know if that's gonna, that one's not gonna pull through. We're going to clip that one really close. Okay. Corey, have you done one with clear vinyl or have you I done all of them like with like the the way the pattern is originally because this is I, like I said I don't know I, I like I'm pretty sure that people have you have three more cut out too it's like it is a pretty nice like like the this is what I said to my, my husband after I finished the other one. I was like, it came together. Like, once you had all the pieces, like, prepped, like, it came together so nicely. I'm going to wait to the end, you guys, to put these on. That way you don't see me fumbling with those little tiny screws um, if you don't want to. All right, so I have this piece, these done. Now what? Now what's next? Okay. Well, if you were going to do the inside zippers, I mean the inside, um, yeah, the inside zipper, um, this is when you would do it in the slip pocket if we had a lining, but we do not. So now I'm going to do my zipper for the inside zipper pocket. All right, so I have my zipper piece. And I have my zipper tabs. And I need my little zipper pull. No clear vinyl. I like to use faux leather for the exterior waterproof. Yeah. And rivets to attach the interior zipper pop. Oh, that sounds really, that's a good idea instead of sewing it. Very nice. That is a very good idea. I actually thought about that when I was doing um, doing my other one. So now I have, this is the pocket piece. I think I'm going to put my little um, crafting the healing part 
label on this. So let me do that quick. Yeah, it, like I said, it did come, once I had it all like going, it, it came together pretty nicely. All right. The one part I'm a little nervous about this is when it's time like to finish like with the zippers and stuff because that was the one tricky part, Corey, if I gotta say. Three o'clock appointment. Thanks, Penny. I appreciate you just coming for a little bit. Good luck with your appointment. Yeah, so we're we're really busy here. If you um, follow my Instagram or you're in my group, you know that um, I'm soon gonna have my own line of fabrics. Um, after going to So Magical and teaching at So Magical, the Indigo Shambori, uh, I one I really love teaching the classes. Like that is definitely something that I enjoy and love doing. Um, I am going to be doing online classes for Indigo Shibori. I have one scheduled for the end of um, this month that you can find on my website. I'll add those links um, in later if anybody's interested. You get like the whole kit and we'll dye, we'll, we'll do everything together. We'll dye together. Um, and then I'm also going to be doing live workshops here on the farm for Indigo Shibori as well. Um, but I realize, you know, some people just, and I'm one of these people too, with a lot of things. So many times I'm just like, I don't want to start an entire new craft, but I would like to use like whatever that is. Right. Um, and so my husband and I kept talking and I was like, you know, it is something I really love doing. I really do love doing, um, the dyeing. Um, with natural fibers and there's a lot of other techniques that I've done that you know like I haven't shared in a class and um, the other part from my past life is I worked um, in fashion uh, you know design and worked in ethical fashion and the one thing that I think would be really helpful for many of us who hoard fabric is learning a little bit about color theory and how do we piece things together and match things together to make them aesthetically pleasing and just sharing some of that knowledge. So um, every fabric launch that I have, whatever color it is, there's also going to be um, color theory provided. Uh, and uh, kind of what I want to do is work with some of the other fabric vendors out there because like Gabby at Wonderground has beautiful stuff um, to be able to share with you like so this fabric that I have, this will go well with this, this, and this from these other places um, so that you can really kind of piece together a really beautiful, you know, item uh, and learn a little bit about color theory because you can use the color theory pretty much. I mean, people who dye hair use color theory. So, um, so yeah, so it's really exciting. We're setting up um, my back backyard dyeing station and my workshop area for hosting workshops here. And it's just a lot. It's a lot. I might have to try it and clear. I can't find any of the cute prints in stock. It is hard to, with the TPU, because it's such a hot commodity right now. Um, I will tell you, I do have a friend. Um, her name might be Katie from My Little Shindig. Um, watch, she's soon going to have, uh, some fun pretties, um, on her, on her page. So definitely make sure you check it out. Make sure I have the right side here. And I am also, um, if you are in my Facebook group, um, so this Thursday I'm doing, 
I used to do shop drops at, uh, the first Thursday of every month of like the products that I was sewing, like the bags that I was sewing or um, home decor that I was sewing. However, that has to go away because it's just, it's too much. Um, so this coming Thursday will be the last one of those where I actually have like a collection that I'm sharing, but I am going to start de-stashing some stuff. So, and I have so much of this clear vinyl that I, I feel like to do YouTube videos, I probably am not going to use it all of it. <laughs> so I might actually de-stash some of the clear TPU that I have. So if you're looking to try to get some at a decent price, um, check out my de-stash page after Thursday because I think I'm going to put some on there. All right. I always have to like feel this to make sure that I have it right. And I'm using the water resistant um, canvas from Wonder Ground. I don't know if this is called lilac. I want to say that it's called lilac, this color, but I'm not sure if it's just light mm. purple. Because I got crazy with all the Disney prints when I first started buying. And I just, I mean, I live in Pennsylvania. I love Disney. And if I was making things for myself. But I don't get, have enough of a base of people who want Disney bags like some people do. Okay. Corey's probably like, you're making this bag all wrong. <laughs> I feel, I feel like you might judge me, Corey. <laughs> all right. So I have the tabs on here. Um, I think that the tabs, Corey, probably tell me if I'm wrong. I did this the other, with my last one. The tabs are supposed to go all the way to the end. I actually, to try to help with the bulk, I chose to make mine a little shorter. Um, so just so that you know that because I think the pattern has it go all the way to the end and that would be why it would be smart like what Corey's doing to add rivets when we're piecing that together I know I'm doing something that some of you are probably gasping about and clipping a notch in my zipper tape but it's the only way way I feel I can make sure I'm centering it correctly. I need more clips. I need a better, I need a better clip container. I'm using from the, the Boo Happy Meal container, you guys, um, from last year. It, it works just because I have so many clips, but I feel like I need something different. I need to find something, something that, uh, like I need two separate ones because I have my really big long clips, and then I have my shorter clips, and I feel like I need one of each, like one for my big ones, one for my little ones. All right, so I'm just doing an eighth of an inch, and then I'm gonna fold it over and top stitch. Oh, I guess I don't need to do an eighth of an inch, do I, Corey? Because I need to do a quarter inch. Quarter inch, and then fold it over, because I don't have a lining. I don't know, like the TPU with the sale rate, it makes like a, 
Ah, if you hear the squeaky sound it makes. Yeah, it is, I mean, it is definitely different than the other one that I made, but I'm, I'm one of those people that, like, I need to make something, I would say at least three times before I feel like, girl, you got this, <laughs> you know, um, usually by time three, I'm like, okay, I know what I'm doing. All right, so this is where it's going to be interesting. This is why also I think the TPU vinyl is really nice because it it is more pliable. It's it's definitely um, easier to maneuver than the other stuff, and it also doesn't like it doesn't crinkle like some of the um, clear vinyls do. All right, so now we're just gonna stitch this, top stitch this. nice all right so now we're just gonna do the other side I was trying so you're gonna see I did um, because this final like it's it's you know it's printed so it's white on the back um, so I figured for the pocket it wasn't that big a deal but you'll see I did double up um, some of the pattern pieces to kind of make a lining just because I wanted it to, like when we, when someone opens it, I want it to, I want it to look nice. So you'll see that when we get to those parts. All right, so now I'm just gonna line up the other side of the inside pocket. Or a quarter inch. Some people can make really gorgeous things with this TPU. I, I mean, I'm very envious of some people who've been making some really beautiful bags with it. I did hear, though, like, I mean, I think that these bags are really great, but, like, the whole marketing of the ones that are printed for concerts and stuff, I think, I think some places are like, no, it has to be, like, completely clear. It can't. It can't be, like, there can't be any printing on it. But I don't know. I, I'm not a heavy concert goer. I do know, like, certain sizes. You know, like, they have to be certain sizes. I would just hate to sell somebody a bag and be like, oh, you can use this. And then, then be told, like, oh, no, you can't. <laughs> parks and stuff I think like if you're going to like uh like here we have Hershey Park and 
Knobles. We do Knobles a lot in the summer. Actually, my daughter and her friends, that was one of the places they did on spring break was Hershey Park. They went to the opening day of Hershey Park. They had a blast. All right, so now I'm gonna open, now that this is top stitched, it looks nice. Pretty happy with it. It's gonna look pretty once it's in there, I think. So now I'm going to close it up, right? I think that's what it said that, that you do. If I remember correcto mundo. Yep. I'm going, yeah, I'm just gonna close the bottom and then I'm gonna turn it right side out. And then I'm gonna just um, stay stitch the sides. All right. And was this a three, three quarter? Yeah, three eighths of an inch. Three eighths of an inch seam allowance for closing this up. I wonder. So I just got my sewing blurb, so don't anybody look, I guess. But I wonder if it would look cute there. I think I'm gonna put it, I think I'm gonna put it with the binding. Um, I did put a sewing blurb in my other one, in this part. do here um, is I always clip these corners in so that it looks nice and I, I think I'm gonna leave that much in there but what's nice about this TPU is it it really it ha is forgiving I probably should have heated it a little bit I don't want to pull my zipper but we'll just take our time right you guys I'm so nervous. Keep going, keep going. You can do it, you can do it. PA. <laughs> That's awesome. Why? <laughs> why? Why did you honeymoon in PA? Was there like you specifically wanted to go to Hershey or were there other things? Because Hershey, I understand. I know that um, the Poconos are like a big deal for people um, to honeymoon in the Poconos. So I, the only reason I laugh is I'm just like, there's nothing in Pennsylvania. I feel like uh, I'm so jaded. <laughs> it really is a beautiful place. I shouldn't say that. I mean, we we have tourism here on our farm, um, but yeah, there is there is actually. I think when you live someplace, you just don't realize how much there actually is. So, as you can see, I kind of I clip this bottom part because definitely. It wants to kind of bounce back and I wanna be able to sew down these sides. But it looks super cute. Like, I'm so excited. You live in Seattle? Yeah. <laughs> Seattle's gorgeous. Um, I've been, I used to 
I used that's where I used to head to Portland and Washington a lot for my past life. Beautiful, beautiful area. Very so this is where it's interesting because I feel like out there I mean definitely you have some different climate and you have also access to like different types of coastal stuff than what we do. But I definitely could see like similarities to that side of the US compared to like here in Pennsylvania. Um there's definite um similarities with just like like how things look, mountain ranges and things like that. Yeah, a lot of people go to the Poconos, which isn't too far from me, about an hour. We're about an hour from the Poconos. And this is a part, like, I feel like with the tension, it like seems to want to not, not up at the start. Not sure why that is. So yeah, so I'm just, oh, maybe that's why. Cause my thread was caught there. So now I'm just stay stitching the sides or basting the sides as some people say. Stay stitching and basting are the same thing, right? I feel like I use them intertwined and maybe they're not the same thing. I'm trying to talk my husband taking a vacation to your farm. Oh, we would love to have you. Um, so I, the one reason things have been really crazy is we are our one site, our Algonquin Gitagon site, which is um, it has queen size bunk beds in it. Um, so it's more it's more the family site um, for people. And so that site already for May is completely booked, um, which is great. I'm not complaining. I'm not complaining. It's just that's that's pretty quick um, for us. Uh, it's it feels like I'm like, oh, are we gonna have another 2020? And if I can just explain to you what it was like to have campsites during the pandemic. It was nuts. It was crazy. Um, we were very blessed when I know when there's so many people who were like looking for jobs and like we were very blessed, but it was it was crazy. We did not come up for air. Um because we're so close uh, to like New Jersey, New York City, Philly, Baltimore, like everything is within one or two hours from us. So we had so many people who wanted to get out of the city and we were so, so booked. Our other site, our other site can, um, it has a queen size um, bed in the tent, but both sites you can add a pop-up tent um, okay, so here's my dilemma, you guys, before I move any further. So this, these are the side pieces, and I cut two of them because I thought I wanted the inside to look just as nice as the outside, but then, you know, like when you're looking at from the outside, it's gonna, you're gonna see the inside. Do you think that matters? I don't know. I feel like I'm just going to roll with what my plan was <laughs> and we'll see how it turns out in the end. I just figured like to give it, give it the structure I feel like it needs. I wanted to do that. So we're just gonna, we're gonna roll with it. And I'm going to hope that I can turn, turn it right side, right side out because I don't know it's probably going to be tricky yes but anyways Georgie we would love for you to come and visit all right so we're going to do quarter inch seam allowance 
on the top and the bottom here. Back stitching at the beginning and the end. Yeah, that was my thought, Corey. I thought it it probably needed a little bit more structure because, you know, like the original pattern, you're interfacing some things. So I figured since I wasn't interfacing anything, I would want some of it to have a little bit more structure to it. Here comes the boy child. My son's getting off the bus. Yes, he's 17 and he isn't doesn't have his license. He has no interest. It's so hard to get him. We have to force him to drive, basically. In the pattern, it says to use a layer to cut down on ball cues. Yeah, yeah. So, we'll... We'll see how this turns out. Ooh. I'll say this is interesting though, to get it to turn. To turn a tube of TPU, I probably should have an iron, like a blow dryer, I should say. Mm. Hey bud, I'm doing a live. How was your day? Seventeen and yawning. <laughs> oh my goodness. If you have arthritis in your hands, <laughs> which most sewers do, it's coming. It's coming. There we go. All right. Well, it works. And I think it'll look nice, so sometimes, sometimes it's worth it, right? sure Georgie's getting excited for so magical I saw that um Tennessee had their um people could pick their classes I hope that if you're going you can take my buddy Georgie class because the zip the uh zip away tote is an amazing pattern it's so good Georgie so good okay Maybe you could fold it over and stitch. Does that make sense? Yeah, I feel like I feel like this was probably the easiest way to do it because getting it to fold over is also difficult. It would probably be difficult to, I mean, I guess you could hold it with clips. But I think I think the turning it is probably the best route. All right, so we're gonna top stitch the um, top and the bottom now of this. you guys what happened look at that eh, something didn't sound right did it I was thinking that the whole time that I was doing it what in the world what was that about well 
I hate adding more holes to this. But it needs to it needs to come out. <laughs> oh my goodness. That was not cool. <laughs> what happened? What do you guys think happened? My tension is the same. Why would it do that? Oh my goodness, what a hot mess. Let's see. Well. Ripping, ripping, ripping. That's why I'm wondering if my bobbin came loose, but I don't know. We'll pull it out in a second here once. Ugh, this is such a pain. Not fun. I feel like doing these lives is helping me with my perfectionism <laughs> because obviously mistakes happen all the time, right guys? But it is so hard for me to make mistakes in front of people. Like I beat myself up about it a lot. And that's just part of how I was brought up, I think. I really tried to nip it in the bud with my kids, like, and just encouraging them to try their best. Like, no one is perfect. Everybody fails at stuff. But yeah, the perfectionism thing runs strong. Anybody else deal with that? I know we all make mistakes when we sew. I believe me. I I know everybody does. I think it's I think it's just I don't know. I think it's just again. I think it was how I was raised about like how people perceive you, which to me mistakes are like mistakes are human. If I, if someone's perceiving me as not being human, that's not a good thing. But. I was raised by another generation of people, right? I was raised by my grandparents. And my grandparents were born in uh, 1913 and 1919. So I just feel like everything was about, you know, like the whole keeping up with the Joneses thing. I was, it's been a lifelong journey trying to kick some of those habits that they don't matter, <laughs> eh, you know, but it was one of the, re like, at first I really did not like the lives. Like I, and I had to realize like, that's why I wasn't liking the lives is I was so worried about if I made a mistake, what people would think. But again, like you said, all sewers use their ripper. <laughs> There isn't a single one of us who hasn't got to know it well. So. I 
I can't remember my grandmother and God bless her heart because it was literally just, you know, how she was raised, right? In the time of society that she was raised in. But like if someone's front porch had stuff on the front, like if it didn't look nice, oh, can you believe? <laughs> uh, you know, I always had to be dressed a certain way. I was very proper. It was a proper way to do things. Not that I don't think that there's certain societal things that are important, but oh my gosh, this is don't make any mistakes on the TPU. <laughs> it's a pain to pull it apart. Maybe if I go this direction. That'd be easier. I remember it really driving me crazy as a kid. Some of the things my grandmother thought were like important. And now to a certain extent, I think some of those things are kind of lost. But whole perfectionism thing especially for girls I feel like it was I don't know not that boys don't have societal things that make no sense Because of how tight my stitch is, I have to like pull it from the back. There we go. Okay. Well, it's clean now. All right. We got the first step. Everything is fixable, right, you guys? Let's see what this bobbin looks like. My bobbin looks okay. Let's just rewrap it. Everything looks good with how my needle is threaded. There we go. That's a lot of thread that came out though. Goodness. All right, let's try this baby again. Hopefully, hopefully it's good this time. Oh, something not right, you guys. Nope. Okay. we make a mess of this piece let me get a piece of scrap right that's the right thing to do you guys are right if it's this bobbin because every time I pull it out it's like unraveled a bit let's see what we're just gonna at least they hate throwing like the thread away if it is but I have another bobbin here that we can give a try and we'll get some scrap fabric 
Okay. Where do I have some scraps? You'd think I'd have scraps somewhere. But. Here, we'll, we'll use this. Oh, you know what? I bet you it's my tension. I probably... I probably need to change my tension because it's four layers of this and not two. You think? Oy vey. Sundana. Well, at least we'll know for the second time around. Or maybe increase my stitch length. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Sewing the TPU to TPU. This is the first time I'm ever doing that. So I feel like it's a le this is the learning process with the seal right of what what my seal right likes you know what I mean because every machine is different Deep breaths, deep breaths, deep breaths. I'm going to cut another piece off here. Where do I have it? Where do I have it? Where did I put it? Oh, I know where I have it. I'm going to just grab another piece of this so we can not ruin what we're doing here, right? Okay, so right now we're, we're doing four pieces like so. my stitch length and I'm going to loosen my tension a little bit and see what happens. Mm, nope. Maybe the tension needs to be, be more. that's what needs to happen. The tension needs to be more. Tension needs to be more. I think, I think that's 
that's what needs to happen. Yeah, that would make sense because it's going through so much and the, and it's and the plastic is like plastic tries to expand. Okay, that's what we need to do. We need to increase our tension. I don't think I can increase it any more than what it is though. So let's let's pray. Yep, that's what needed to happen, you guys. That's what it was. I have to say that I think that there's the one thing that intimidates people with um, industrials is like having to play with all of that stuff, which I won't lie, it intimidated me at first. It still intimidates me a little bit, but I love my Sailorite. I cannot, I'm so happy. See there? Tension wasn't perfect on that one, but it's okay. It's not horrible. All right, now we need to do this. This side. I'm really excited to share more um, color theory stuff with you all. I think one of the really cool things um, that a lot of fashion designers that I've worked with have done is they build like a, a color theory theme um, for collections that they're doing. And they kind of, they write out like the mood and the, you know, like everything to go along um, with that collection as far as like what the the theme is and I think it would be such a cool thing um, for bag makers and um, sewists to use um, to help also with then when you're marketing it because um, that was also part of um, what I did was like I would use the color theory to then build what we were doing with marketing or how we were um, sharing it and so I'm really excited to offer more of that for those of you who are, who are doing crafty businesses I think it will help set some people apart going on what is that I think we're fine okay of the tail in there that I didn't make sure it was out of the way. Yeah, 
so I got this really cool industrial sink. It's crazy to be like excited about a sink. Um, but I got this sink. The reason I'm excited, I think, mostly is because all of my hand dyeing that I've done up to this point, that wasn't at like a class where there were actual industrial sinks, um, has been in five gallon buckets that we get from Costco. <laughs> so having the sinks to actually like pre soak my fabric before I dye it. Um, my husband also is going to build um, outside a washing machine so that I can, um, well, he's not building the washing machine, but like he's going to build it in near the sink so um, I can take my fabric and wash it right away, um, which is awesome. So I'm so excited about it. And then today we were talking about, because obviously with anything you need storage, so we're, um, we want to put also along the back patio, we're going to be building like a little shed there for all of the dye storage and inventory. And then something else is going inside the shed, which... I'm not going to relay yet because it's it's going to take a little bit for that to fully take shape. But it was not something I was prepared for. But my husband was like, no, you need to get it and do it. So, <sighs> yes. And the reason I say yes is because my husband is usually the one to be like, you know, maybe we should wait. Maybe we should wait. We should wait. We shouldn't spend that money. Maybe we should wait. <laughs> and when my husband is not the one who's saying that and I'm the one who's saying that it makes me very nervous but it usually he's usually the, the one who's right <laughs> hopefully he never watches this live <laughs> oh that's awesome Corey see okay girl um so I wanted to go, so this was, this was me in high school. I had every art class, like my senior year, my, almost my entire, um, oh shoot, I should increase this a little bit. Almost my entire schedule in high school was art classes. Um, the only other classes I had were business. Um, my art teacher, which is really funny, um, because I live in the town that I went to high school, okay? Um, my art teacher in high school, he was, him and his wife were actually my babysitters when I was little. Um, my parents, when I was very little and before I was born, they had a pottery business, a ceramics and pottery business, um, where they taught pottery and they taught ceramics. And so my art teacher in high school and my parents were, we're good, good friends. Um, and so my art teacher one day, cause I, I was thinking about going to art school and, um, he was like, so tell me, how are you going to sell your art? And I was like, and you know, 1999, there wasn't a whole lot of, um, internet happening. There was some, but not like it is today. Um, and so I was like, I don't know, at art shows, at galleries, you know, like, because I was more of a painter than anything at the time. I always loved fashion. I used to draw, like, my own fashion and, like, notebooks and stuff like that. But um, I never really thought about going to, like, fashion design school because um, it just felt, like, kind of out of reach. I don't know why. Um, because I feel like if I would have known how to mm -hmm. sew, that definitely probably would have been the avenue that I went. Um, and when he asked me like, you know, like, how are you going to make money? I was like, I don't know. <laughs> so that's why I started taking business classes in about 10th grade. I started taking business classes and I really loved all of my business and marketing classes. Um, and so it was kind of a toss up. Like my senior year, I was like, either I'm going to go to art school 
or I'm going to go to be a business teacher. And I was accepted to all the schools that I applied for, both art and business. And I had a boyfriend at the time that I was like, thought I was in love with. And uh, decided to go to the school closest for business because he was close. And the things you do when you're young and in love. Um, I really appreciate my degree because my degree is in business. But there are many times where I wish I would have went for art and that I also would have got my teaching certificate because I, that was it's definitely more of who I am than working in a corporate business somewhere so but all of the fashion and art thing like what's very cool is and this is what I tell my kids and I tell all the kid all the kids in my family who are thinking about college is like your original career is never it's never the forever career, right? Like our lives take us down so many different avenues. Um, you know, like everything evolves. And so I feel like even though I didn't go to art school and I didn't get a teaching degree, I'm still, I'm making art and I'm still teaching. So, you know, like, and I, I, I'm on a public school board, um, because I really believe in public education and, uh, I feel like that's my contribution versus being a teacher, you know, cause so, so often, like, I know a lot of teachers, like it's hard for teachers to speak up. So I feel like I get to be the voice for teachers too. All right. We got through it. We got through it. You didn't end up teaching either? Yeah. I feel like it's, again, I, my nephew, like, um, is the same age as my daughter, and he really struggled with, like, deciding what he wanted to go to school for. Um, he actually ended up, up dro dropping out of school, um, which I think is partly pandemic, partly, you know, just because I think kids are just so like condition to be like, you need to know what you're going to do with your entire life when you're, when you're 17. <laughs> and I basically just told my kids like, listen, I want you, I think higher education is important of some type, whatever higher education you want to do. Great certificate, trade school, college, whatever. Um, but I don't want you to think that it's what you need to do your whole life because it's literally just needs to be what you're interested in now. So my daughter is the one who like, she's known what she wanted to do her since I feel like she was conceived. <laughs> she wants to be an astronaut. So she's been working towards that since she's like 11 years old. She's done a lot of things and accomplished a lot of things in her 20 years of life. Um, cause she's just, she just knows where my son, he's like, he, he's so go with the flow. And so I think he's probably going to end up doing something in esports and technology. He, I think he definitely has more of the entrepreneurial spirit yeah, my daughter does have a website if you want to check it out. So she, um, the pandemic really messed, she's a 2021 graduate. Um, so the pandemic really messed up some of her opportunities because um, she was accepted into a program called Project Possum. She was youngest ever accepted at 15. And then the pandemic hit and everything got put on hold. But it's basically to... Um, get certified in commercial um like she could she could be an astronaut for like Jeff Bezos and um Richard Branson and stuff like that um so but she can't do that now until she graduates from college because of the pandemic everything was postponed uh, but she built a website 
for her Girl Scout Gold Award, which is Izzy on Mars. So if you'd like to check it out, that's my kid. I'm very proud of her. It's a lot of work. So I'm, this was the other area that I kind of made a little bit sturdier, which is the base. I just, I'm just doubling up on the TPU. So I'm just gonna stay stitch that together. Well, my son, he kind of is teetering between like being a tech ed business teacher and doing esports management, so like the business end of esports. And he's more of my home buddy, homebody kid, so where my daughter, like, she couldn't wait to, like, get out of here. <laughs> That's why she's seven hours away. about fashion design in my past life. And also my dad designed fashion for a while. If anybody remembers Wilson Athletics, um, my dad did um, designing, clothing design for them back in the 80s. And I modeled for them when I was like five. Okay, so we stitch these together. Where so now now I guess that all that's done. You found the website? Yeah, that's my kid. She hasn't updated it in a little while just because of college. Um, but I'm sure she'll eventually update eSports. So eSports is video game competition. Um, it's okay. So the only way I can wrap my brain around it, because it truly is an industry, I would not allow my kid to, um, do something that isn't uh, something that he can survive on. Uh, so, oh, I, I don't need to do this yet. Um, yes. So esports, I need to close these now because I did that wrong. Um, esports is basically... Like, I don't know if, if, you know, kids, like, watch other people play video games on Twitch. Um, I did not know, understand it at all at first until we started, um, realizing like, my daughter's college actually, um, has an esports management program. And they also deal a lot with Olympic kids because it's in the Adirondacks. So, um, they told us that esports, you know, how big it was getting, uh, that it's basically like a, I don't know, something five point something billion dollar billion business. Um, and so we started researching more because my, my son kept talking about it and, uh, basically it's like kids compete Young people compete playing a video game on teams. It's just like any other sport. They have a team and uh, people watch it. People pay big bucks to watch it. And uh, there's a whole interest industry around it from nutrition to um, so many different things. So that's what my son is um, looking into like being an esports coach is what he really wants to do. Um, but that will not pay put food on his table. So he has to, you can also work in event centers. So like they have big, almost like comic cons, but it's like strictly for um, these big competitions. Um, and like my, my daughter's school, 
they were, they got into it because the guy that runs their sports program, he said that he thinks in the next like 10 years that esports will actually be an Olympic sport. Um, I will share with a friend of mine who is a Girl Scout leader. Oh, her, her website. Yeah, definitely. Um, and when she has free time, um, she loves to speak to other Girl Scouts. So, um, they can just email and sometime if she is off this summer, if she doesn't have an internship, she could maybe, you know, do something where she could do a Zoom or something because she has done that in the past. Okay. Tech is always changing and evolving. Um, it's actually one of the things that I helped um, start at our school was an eSports um, curriculum because there, it is truly like business curriculum. And uh, yeah. All right. So we're going to stitch these on the side of our handle piece. We don't know how this is going to turn out because... There was another piece that went on the top of this. I guess I can just bind this then, maybe. I don't know, we'll see. We'll see how this looks when we're, when we're done here. But yes, that's what my son is interested in. And they are building two eSports event centers not far from us, uh, so. Like I said, it's basically just like sports management, you know, like, you know, like a kid was going to try to go into sports management. It's basically the same, same environment where there's so many different industries that are connected to it. Just specifically with video games. And I feel last year, because when we were researching, putting together a curriculum for our school, last year alone, there were close to 40,000 esports teams being created in high schools across the U.S. So that's more, that's more teams than football teams, like high school football teams. So little esports statistics for you. <laughs> I think anything that keeps kids in school, like the one thing we recognized with our program at our school already is that kids who are not part of a specific social group um, who would potentially, you know, maybe they weren't doing too well in school, uh, being a part of the esports curriculum has actually increased their attendance. So to me, that means it's a winner. Okay, where did I go? Ooh. Oh, there it is. I'm trying to find my zipper. All right, so now that we attached the two sides onto the top, we're going to attach the zipper. And so that's, I did notch my zipper, even though I know it is sacrilegious, but. It's really, to me, it's, it just makes sure I'm centered. And you're just going, you are going to have a little bit of overhang on your zipper. And I'm not putting my zipper pull on. going to start at the center because this was actually a very good idea I thought mm -hmm. this was how she showed to do it in her video of starting in the center that way your zipper isn't off I thought that was a very good tip because we are going 
to separate the zipper, which is also very scary the first time you do it. It's kind of wonky awkward at this stage, but mm. it's really nice after a week away to where you're where I wasn't sewing to be at the sewing machine again. So thank you you guys for joining me and hanging with me. top stitch that somehow oh. I think this is one of the reason I like sewing like I'm usually not a big puzzle fan all right like puzzles are not my thing but I feel like sewing is a puzzle I enjoy <laughs> okay so now this is gonna be interesting so now without any lining, we need to turn this right side out and top stitch it. That's going to be, it's gonna be tricky. We're gonna have to move the boo box. I'll put him on the floor. And let's see, I think, I think going this direction is probably gonna be the best way to do that. Okay. Right? That's what I need to do. Yep. It's going to be really tricky doing the next one, I think. Okay. I mean, it's good that it's pliable, that's for sure.
It looks nice though, I have to say. It's, it's gonna look pretty when it's done for sure. You can do it. All right, so now what? Now what's next? I think now is when I need to pull the zipper. No. Now I need the other piece, this piece here. And we need to do the same thing with this. So we need to, it's facing, so wrong sides facing each other. Um, but I need a measure. I think I'm really glad that I added that extra structure to it because I feel like once it's zipped together, it'll actually like stay the shape that it's supposed to. <clears throat> okay, so now we're gonna line these babies up. Oh, you won't see those edges because the zipper I just realized that. Well, that's good. That works out nicely. Yay. Okay. That works. That works really well. Okay. Great. So I was like, because I'm not buying, you don't bind that part because it's in the zipper. Yay. Okay. Okay. All right. Now, part. The scary part is I want to. I'm fraying here, so keep it from fraying. We're going to uh, scary. All right, we're gonna keep this like so. I'm going to find my notch, and now we're gonna clip. This is gonna look really pretty. I'm actually very happy with this all of a sudden. Corey, you need to do one. If you haven't done this pattern yet, you definitely need to do it the regular way first though. So I feel if I would have tried this the first time around, 
it probably would not have gone <laughs> gone there wouldn't have been a sparkling review <laughs> okay let's see here make sure that I'm good okay and getting there I'm excited all right now I need to top stitch this I guess I have to turn it oh my goodness this is where it's like awkward but this is where I have to turn it oh goodness how am I doing this see this is where I was like how how in the world am I top stitching that? I guess I still have to keep it. Yeah. Ooh, it's This is going to be weird. Okay. How is this going to work? needs to be done. is like tripping me like where the top position is <laughs> it's tripping me out
Okay. Now, oh, this is going to be cool, you guys. Did I do that right? I didn't do that right, did I? No, because... <laughs> because how is that going to go inside? It's not. Oh, no. Well... That's our show today, you all. Oh, crap. Because this should be... Everything is fixable, y'all. Everything is fixable. So. Shoot, 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 shoot. I'm going to have to pick it. I'm going to have to pick it. But at least we know that for if we're doing clear vinyl. So this would need to be on the inside of the zipper. So what I should have done instead of following, because I followed the instructions, right? Yeah, because if I would have had a lining, it would have been, would it have been correct? I know what I did. I treated this as if it was the lining, and it's not. It's the exterior. That's that's what I did. Oi. My grandma will be rolling over in her grave today with all the imperfectionism. Oh, and it's so, it's sewn in there so tight. This is, it's, oh, oh, lordy. Well, I faced the zipper, so I treated this, because there would be a lining piece. So you put your zipper, you put your zipper on the lining when you're doing the actual pattern to start. You don't put it on. Yeah. Oh, ay, 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 ay. Well, you're learning all the things not to do here today, everybody. If I can just get the zipper up from here, that's, I think... Dang it, dang it, dang it. I should have put the zipper on first um, because of using the clear. That's what should have happened. But I wasn't thinking about that. Well, I think that's all for our show today because this is going to take me way too long and you guys don't want me to... You don't want to sit here and watch me pick this more. But I am going to pick it. I'm going to fix it. We're going to fix it. But basically what would happen after, if you did it right, put the zipper on. If you're going to do clear, if you're going to do clear, you're going to put the full zipper on your exterior top and your exterior bottom first. Top stitch it. And then you're going to put your sides with the zipper facing like this, you're gonna put your sides in like so. 
right? That's what we would have need, needed to do. I think, right? Yeah, I think that's what we needed to do. So I'm gonna rip it apart and fix it. I promise to post a picture of the finished, um, but I think that's what we need to do. I think you need to put your zipper on first and then put this because these have to be, they have to be able to go inside like so, you know, like you have to be able to zip it up around there. So those would have to be on the inside. So I could have, yeah. You just wouldn't do like it says in the pattern to turn it out and top stitch on top of this. You would have top stitched on top of it, but had the, the this go facing inside still because that has to be on the inside of the zipper. <sighs> hey, we learn. We learn. <laughs> All right. You guys have been awesome. This has been an experience. And that's all that matters, that we learned something, right? Um, I'm nodding like you can see me. <laughs> yeah. It is what it is. It is what it is. Um, I'm not, like I said, I'm not, I'm not a professional. I'm learning all this stuff right along with you guys. So um, we're going to, we're going to fix it because everything is fixable. I'm just going to go and get myself a drink. <laughs> not a, not an alcoholic drink, but a drink. Um, and set Mr. Ripper down for just a second, give him a breather, like I need a breather, and then uh, I'm gonna get back at it and fix it, because I wanna, I wanna get this done today so I can show you all. So, I'll work on it. Thanks for tuning in. I will be live again next week. Um, so next Monday, we are going to be doing the My Little Shindig um, for March, the club uh, pattern, which is a beautiful, beautiful, fun, Pattern. I think it could be done so many different ways other than with the current My Little Shindig um, Fabric Club kit from March. Um, so I'm really excited to do that. Um, and then I think the following week, the following week is two to be determined. Perhaps I think we'll probably have a recorded vi video that week because we're going to pick up something that I can't tell you about yet. <laughs> um, so yeah, so there might be one pre-recorded video this this month for you all. And it'll, it's going to be specifically for you crafty business people who do things on social media because I've gotten a lot of questions about that lately. So I'm going to share some fun things that I've learned how to do. All right. Have a good one. <laughs> this has been fun. Even though it didn't end up the way it just looks so nice, so we have to fix it. We have to fix it. All right. Talk to you all later. Have a good one. Thanks again for tuning in. And remember, crafting <laughs> crafting is the healing part, even, even when it's wonky. Crafting is the healing part. Take care, everybody.